Well guys, today we are going to do a tour of the Delta McKinsey Target Factory here in Iowa, and I'm super excited to show you guys how these 3D targets are made. Let's go check them out. Okay guys, step one with making a 3D target is you start with like a wax and clay kind of mold, which is exactly what this is. And it looks totally real, but you can kind of see here, this is made of clay in a wax kind of um, composite here. So, this, this clay, they mold and sculpt this into exactly what they want. And then the next step is gonna be what I show you, show you afterwards, but they build a mold that basically will fit this exactly the way that it is. And then this is kind of uh, how you start your projects, I mean, or getting your targets, I should say, um, to market. So step one is sculpting. Let's check it out. So in, inside of this is a is a product that we want to make. So we'll put this in there and we actually pour a rubber liner around it and we use that in our molds to make the part. The rubber liner is what picks up all this detail. So inside here we have a new rubber liner. You can see bits and pieces of it here sticking out. And then this is just fiberglass that basically yep. holds all the pressure together to keep the things from blowing up whenever yep. you are injecting into this mold. Correct. Yep. So this is so cool. A lot goes into making a 3D target and it's a lot of detail goes into making them really good like with all the detail in the hair and all that so this is really cool. I'm excited to see the whole process. So what's nice about our process is if we want to change, say we want to change one of the scoring rings, yeah. it's pretty quick and easy for us to do. These guys can move the scoring ring, you put it in here, you see the scoring ring? Put the lid on it, and within a day, we have a whole new look to the, the target. We yeah. change scoring rings, we can put names in it, we can change the texture on it, all sorts of different stuff. That's awesome. Okay, so step one, obviously, is the clay mold and sculpting, and then you make a, a hard version of that, which is uh, what they were doing there with yep. the grinding. Correct. And then, so after that, then you are to make a rubber lining? Yep, is that, is that the, the fiberglass shell and the rubber liner. Yep. And then the third step, if you kind of pan back, you'll see the, the fiberglass inside the steel frame. Oh, okay. So, is it how? I'm not going to be able to see it. Yeah. Probably oh, yeah. A little bit, yeah. Um, so, basically, once we have those fiberglass shells and the, and the liner done, Chris here will frame, build all this frame around it, put the clamps on it, and then um, we got a lock. And see how they rotate. Yeah. So what they'll do is we'll put a core plug and they'll put the machine in there, they'll fill it up with the foam and then they'll spin it to get any trapped air out of it. So every mold will have a different rotation pattern. So when this comes out of this mold, it is ready basically for paint. Yep. That, that, yep. So that would be the next step. Yep. So this is so this is pretty sweet. So each individual target you guys have, everyone that you make that's in the 3D realm goes through the same process. Right. Yep. So how many different frames would you guys say you have that built? Over 400. 400. Yeah, because the bigger the target, obviously you've got to break more them pieces. Yep. More pieces. Yep. So that the, makes sense. The Grizzly Bear, I think we have seven molds for that. Just for the one target. Yep, the one target. Yep. Man, that's incredible. This is really cool, guys. I, I know for me, like getting to see the behind the scenes of how these targets are made really make me appreciate it a lot more, especially considering before, you know, you just think there's a button you press and it's magically made. <laughs> and you're like, oh yeah, now I want that target, you know? So knowing the process that goes into this and the detail you guys are putting like into the actual molds to make them look lifelike and realistic, it's really cool. And yep. it definitely makes me appreciate it more. Sweet, let's move on to the next Yeah, step. we'll head over to Molder.
<laughs> okay guys, so this is the back half of the Elk target that uh, Delta makes, the life-size Elk. And this thing's obviously uh, one of my favorite targets. Go ahead, put it this way. So you guys get to see the inside of this bowl. Check it out. So there's that rubber lining that we are talking about that helps yep. put in the detail of all the, the hair. So that would be an insert for the dovetails for the connections. Um, so you put those in there so then obviously no foam goes where the connection is male yep. and female is. So I can pull yeah. it when I pull the part out instead of ripping the foam this comes out with it and I can slide that out. Yeah, this is so cool. You guys have seen, I don't even know how many videos of me <laughs> shooting and Sarah shooting this elk target in our backyard, but it is by far one of our favorite elk targets. So this is actually the front half, not the back half. Correct, yeah, this yeah, is yeah, the front. Right. So the head would connect here, and then the back half, the rear would connect here. Yeah, so you guys can see the detail and the hair with all this. And again, the more real you can make it, the better your odds are in the woods, because then you can replicate that experience you know, in your hunting experience. So it's, uh, it's obviously a critical detail, but also, you know, the more detail and all this stuff, you know, the higher quality of the product. So really cool. Okay, cool. so this is one of three components of that elk target. So you guys can see, and it takes a full day to cure this, right? Yeah, this this yeah. guy is, it, uh, for it to shoot, you gotta set it a day. Yeah, each part is a whole day of just curing by itself. So this process is so cool to see, especially from you know average archer like me. I had no idea how these things were made. Yep. Cool. Yeah, that's actually a lot heavier than I thought it was. Yeah. And this is where you inject the mold. Yep. Yeah. So, so. Yeah. Some some of them we have a core plug like that. Yeah. So we'll inject there. Other ones we actually shoot it with it open. Ooh. Which makes it even more interesting because you have a certain amount of time to close it, clamp it, and get it rolled. So over here, if they're when if they're still forming when we get over, you'll see guys and they're moving. The clamps are going and things are spinning and they're doing it quick. Yeah, you get a little hectic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, these have to be pretty robust just to keep from the explosion of the that, right? Yep. And you pour the, the target foam straight through there. Yep straight in there and then once it's filled, then you you obviously plug this yep. and then keep it plugged for this guy. Yep. Wow. So when we so some of these this guy will like snap. So that's how we'll pour it. So it'll be up oh, so that our machine can actually get in and pour that and then We'll plug it like you showed. That, that like is that. so cool. Yep. So it'll, it'll actually foam and raise up, and there'll be enough pressure that the, the foam will actually start to squirt out of the bottom. Out of the top. Yep. Uh, depends on the animal. So the elk, we have one set. So I can make one elk every, you know, every round. But if you go to like our daddy molds, like the baby daddy, we have yeah. two sets. So when we run those, I'm running two bodies, two heads, two legs, so I can double the production. So it's all based on how many we want to make in a certain period of time. Wow. So generally the smaller, uh, more retail animals, we have a lot, lots of more. Uh, That's just crazy to think that you make each individual target basically one at a time. And there's not like an assembly line where they're just squirting out like Willy Wonka. No. Nope. Yeah. Nope. That's pretty awesome. We do, so our scheduling, we do, uh, some days we'll do what's called a pod, and we'll give them eight or nine molds. And it's three guys, one guy pours, one guy pulls, and the other guy trims. So there'll be a, an edge on here that they have to cut off with the knife, yeah. the, 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 the off flat and on the edge. And, it's, and they circle through those nine, 10, 12 molds, and we tell them, today with the mold you have, you gotta do that round, or 10 rounds, you gotta, you gotta go through that cycle 10 times. Tomorrow, maybe 20 times, depends on the group of molds. Yeah, that's so cool. Gosh, I just keep building more and more, you know, appreciation for the targets I have. <laughs> well, then, you know, days like uh, probably Friday, it'll be 90 degrees outside. Right. And as you can tell, we're not here conditioned in here. So here's the, uh, 
this would be the front or the head of the head. You can kind of see looking, here's its nose, you got an ear, and then that would be the part of mine that hooks in here. We are obviously in America, so 100% yes. made in America. That's true. Really made in America. The whole Delta and Eastern line is. Yeah. Too many Christmas. Look at the size of that thing's head. Yeah. Jump around here. So here would be the corresponding insert for the dovetail. And those. So on these big animals that have. Big antlers, elk, caribou, will actually put an insert that grabs that antler to help support it. That makes sense. Some of our white tail, they're just spades that just stick into the foam, but on these guys... Because uh, the antler size, obviously, you yeah, know, it just tip over. Yeah, I mean, they're, we'll show you the antlers later, but the antlers are each one's, you know, life size. So this one, this one we do four toes too. This is a four plug there. So cool. So this is part two of the big elk that you guys see, the life size elk. So we got the front half, the head, and then now we still have the rear. And then yep. I guess you technically count the antlers as another four. Yeah. Yep. So. Okay. Yep. Now when you say, I mean, when you see the actual life size of this elk, it's actually plus size. Yeah. Like this is like a regular hind quarter with a big bowl. The insert that would yep. obviously go uh, there right there. Yep. Yeah, just like that. So obviously a lot of you guys that are watching this video have definitely bought, you know, elk targets or deer targets, any sort of 3D target that you put together. Well this is how you get that that slot in the middle there to where you can actually slide in the targets together is you can have sections like this made into the mold. So it's that's pretty cool. And what makes this super nice is that this comes out of the mold in the foam, so then when you slide this out, you're not going to actually tear or damage or weaken that part of the target. Yep. Where if this yep. was made in the mold. If you would pull that part out of there, it would try and rip that foam coming right. out of that undercut. So, so it's just another so, detail of quality there. As you can see too, and see how flexible this stuff is. So as that foam hardens up and doesn't want to move anymore, this stuff we can actually grab it and peel it off the foam. Yeah, that rubber lining makes a big difference for detail. And this is awesome. All right, let's keep cool. moving forward. We got this little uh, top over here. Oh, cool. So we're going to do that mold. Now we're going to do a different Yeah, yeah. yeah. So cool. We talked about like a pod system earlier. Yeah. This, tomorrow they're running a little bit different. There's one guy on this machine with this set of molds. Okay. And so he'll pour, pull, and trim all of his own parts. Got it. And then over there at the other machine, we'll have another guy that does the same thing. Okay. So just depending on what we're running and how much work's involved with each one, is kind of how we determine if it's a single guy doing his own little group or they're working together in a pod. Cool. So like right there, in a pod, or they're kind of cleaned it up. Yeah, now. they're getting all cleaned up through there. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. So here's a good example of just the core mold. So this one doesn't have a core plug, so he'll literally run this over to the machine, hit the button, and he'll fill it up. So he's got limited time. Fill up both sides. Uh, just the bottom. Just the bottom. Yep. Okay. Slam it shut. And some of these we just tip straight up, some will go over. So I'll we'll actually spin it all the way around and back up. So it just kind of depends yeah. on how many undercuts and what the bolts are. This is so cool. So we have two foam systems in the house, in house here. If you look up there, you can see our rack where all of our raw materials are coming in. And there's some piping up in the air, and so it feeds into the four machines behind us here. And each machine Through does pipes in the ceiling. And they uh, come down. Well, yeah, right, it's kind of almost oh, where the fans are. You can see the, the yeah, pipes right here, right? Yep. So each, each machine carries either a different color or a different type of foam. 
So this machine here is our Duraflex foam in black. Um, and across from it over there is our brown Duraflex foam. And then down here we have our low flex with brown and, and black. So depending on what we're running that day, we can do black, brown, our backyard, roll stuff. We have the ability to do any target we want. <laughs> That's what spray foam everywhere. <laughs> yeah. And then this bit here is the... Uh, so we spray that in the mold and it's a wax and it, it keeps the foam from sticking. Oh, cool. Right? So Immediately regret doing that. <laughs> I don't know what to do with it. Right. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so that, that keeps the foam from sticking. So basically just like a ham in a, in a cooking Yeah. Thing, you know, right in there, dries up, and your part comes out. Yeah, that has almost like a WD-40 smell to it. It's got a uh, agent that evaporates off and leaves the wax. Oh, that's super nice. Because then you can aerosol wax, basically. Yep. So that would be a very... Oh, I can feel it. Yeah, I can start to feel now, it. Now you kind of feel like a sticky kind of a... Yeah, it's almost soft yep. texture. That's weird. Cool. Yep. Wow. So if you don't do that, then I have to take it over back over to design. We spent a couple days... Digging all the foam off. Oh, God. I'm sure it happens. Oh, yeah. People make yep. mistakes. Yeah. Yep. I've done it. Everybody, it's kind of a learning process here. You have one time, and now we're going to be the mold. Yeah, you get, your, you get your one grace period, right? Yeah, one grace time. One time. Yeah, <laughs> one time. Yeah, this is so cool. So how often, how, how many days would a tub of that last? Like, one day. One day. You have to replace that every day. Yep. So, like, the, the first one there is empty. I probably went up this morning. Wow. Yep. So, each one of those are different levels of foam for different levels of targets. That you guys yeah, correct. So, they're, they're color and foam. So, the first ones are low flex and brown. The next one would be Duraflex black. Okay. The next one would be Duraflex brown. And then our, our low flex brown. I see. So, there's two levels of foam and two colors of but obviously, the better the foam, the more expensive the target. Correct. You know, yep. so you have different levels, like entry level targets, all the way up to guys' pro yep. series, yep. and which get the higher quality foam. Yep. And so that makes sense. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, cool. you talk about like our intruders or our uh, entry level deer would be the, the brown low flight stuff, and then like the elk we talked about earlier, that's going to be your higher end, uh, more durable foam. Oh, cool. Yep. Sweet. Okay. So each mold, like that mold is 10 seconds to fill time. That was a half a second. So that's how the machine meters it out. I tell it how many seconds to pour, that's where it puts in. So based on that, we want it to come up higher. Right. So now the pour is in, it's just going to dry it out. Cool. Yep. So how long before you could actually handle this material? About 10 minutes. Wow. Oh yeah, it's already starting. Is it hot? Yeah. Guys, I say that's super hot to the yeah, touch. It's a hot reaction. And it's like permanent marker, people. This will not come off for days. Hopefully, your steering wheel isn't like tan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding, right? You'll get home and your wife is like, "What happened? Why My wife is gonna kill me. Yeah. It's gonna be all over the thing." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. I mean, it just sticks to the. That's crazy. I can't stop touching it. I can't help it. <laughs> it is so cool. Wow, that is like really fast. Wow. All right, guys. Okay. We're gonna pour our own. We're gonna check this out. Oh, well, yeah, you go ahead and do your. You know what? See how this kind of builds up there? Yeah. So if you let that here, it'll actually spray sideways. So you always gotta make sure that's clean, otherwise it'll. Gotcha. Okay. So I've set my shot number. I'm on 99. And I'll try and I hit the button, and the machine kind of warms up and. That's it. That's it. Wow. Okay. That's already starting to cure yep. and do everything. And it's going to turn into that balloon foam. Yep. That's yeah. the foam. Yeah, it's already, it's probably now starting to rise right about now. That is crazy. Yep. Oh, yeah, it's, it's moving now. Yeah, you guys can see. I'll put my finger right here. So you guys can just kind of see it's 
it's getting closer and closer and closer to my finger. Already touching it. Yeah, it's already touching it. So again, I mean, it is rising fast. You guys can see. And so you only put this little bit down here, and then you can obviously see it just climbing up. Yeah, this is crazy. So it starts obviously as a liquid, which a lot of people don't realize that. You know, I didn't realize that, that all foam starts in a liquid form like you guys just saw. And then it's all computerized to where it needs to fill up in those highly compressed um, molds. So all that's been done and computerized to its right. As you guys can see, this thing is really climbing quick. And uh, this is the foam that goes into your targets. I mean, how cool is that? And so obviously what this is representing is what would happen inside one of those, those molds that we've been showing you guys. So you squirt this in there and then you close it all up and then it expands into that rubber lining that, we, that you guys saw in those molds. And then this turns in to the target that we're gonna show you next. Cool, do you want to shoot one now? Yeah. What's 99 mean? That's the shotgun. That's the point eight seconds that we put. Oh, I got you. Right, so just push it like go. And I'll put both hands on it. It does shoot pretty hard. Oh, yeah. Let it, there you go. Clean itself out, and you're good to go. That's it, guys. That's it. Right there, that is how you start all the targets. This, this right here is going to turn into the foam that goes inside each one of the molds. And then that turns into the foam, and then it presses up against it. That's why you see all this reinforced metal. And this metal is because there's an enormous amount of pressure that's pushing against all this. And uh, that's why you see all these latches and everything else is because this is expanding at an accelerated rate. You guys can already see. It is literally just climbing out of this. And so that's what we would be doing in the gear. It, it turns into that. You can see how it pulls the exact detail out of the bottom of the bucket. Wow. That is crazy. Yeah. I wish you guys could feel this right now because it's super hot. And uh, you guys can see how this mold or the, the foam that they use, their formula, holds the detail to even just the bucket. So you're getting that fine hair detail in your targets as well. This is so cool. Can I have this? Yeah. Oh yeah, that would be. It's like perfect. Cool, well, I'm keeping this. You guys are gonna see me shoot this out of the air when I get home. That'll be a perfect aerial target. Sweet, all right guys, here's the, here's the bucket you guys can see that I literally just filled not even moments ago. It's kind of jiggly but still liquidy, but it's starting to turn into a foam. And then this one is still pretty sticky too, but it's it's getting harder and harder and harder. And eventually it'll turn into that, which doesn't leave any marks. That's really, really cool. Sweet! Let's show you guys how, how these targets are painted. So obviously guys, what you saw with the buckets is a representation of this right here. So that same machine is what squirted the foam into this. This has already been sculpted and mold molded by the rest of the team. And this is the final stage of a turkey before it gets painted. Let's, let's check it out. <laughs> that's the back of it. Wow, check that out. Oh yeah, that's way denser oh, than, yeah. than yep. what that is. So you can see we'll have to trim all this flashing off once we Right pull. here, yep. I see. So we'll follow this line with a knife okay. or a grinder. Turn that on. Right here? Yeah. So this rubber lining is where the detail really comes in. Oh yeah, that's kind of like stick. It sticks. 
lay your, your next one out. So there you can see it preserved all the details of the wings and the bullseye, and yeah. it's all right here. I mean, this is so cool. I want to hell, but I don't want to screw it up. <laughs> oh, here we go. this out guys so obviously um, all this gets trimmed off yep. with like a razor as you guys can see you just peel it kind of peels down real nicely but uh, this isn't painted or anything it's just kind of a raw foam and the heads get painted and, and all that I shot this exact turkey uh, thousands of times I this is one of my favorite turkey uh, targets that I I travel with during certain seasons, so it's honestly not that big. Yeah, yeah. it's a nice, it's a nice smaller. Yeah, you know, smaller. smaller. It's in the truck a little well. Man, this is so neat. So guys, just to show you the process. As you guys saw the foam here, that machine squirted into the bucket. It kind of shows you the representation of the foam, and then obviously. This mold represents that bucket, and it just... Get a warning. <laughs> no, but then, so you guys can see that this uh, turns into this beautiful target. Now you guys kind of know how it works. It all comes from a li liquid form, and how much goes into this is all based on volume. It's all ran by a computer system, um, which these guys are, are well-educated and, and know how to run, obviously, but know the exact amount that goes in produce a perfect turkey every time. So uh, that's pretty cool. And it's the same process with every target. Yep. Yep. Every mold, the only difference is how we roll. Yeah. It depends on the air pockets and traps. Man, this is so cool. There's some other examples of finished ones right behind you. So this, these are an the example of the three molds we looked at earlier. This is a full elk just in a piece. So you've got your mid right here. Let's see the, the process, and then this goes into the painting after this. Yep. So that's these your are paint, templates? Yep, your paint template. So oh, for leopard. painting. So yeah. that because it's leopard, that's where all the spots are, so they just spray this and with the, the white. Same every time. So, you know, if you're heard of ASA or IBO, some yeah. of those shooting ones, well, like this guy's real important that we put the spots in the same spot every time. Those guys are used to judging and they know what dot is by the 12 ring, the 10 ring, and that type of thing. So we've changed these. We get in big trouble with all the shooters because now they're aiming at the wrong spot and they miss a 10 and take a 5 or right. something along those lines. So. And so you have these templates for every single one of these targets uh, that get painted? I would say half the pro ones. Half the, the, the deer that are just white on the belly and the tails, we don't. But if it's something in the actual scoring range, then we'll, we will use the templates so that they're the same every time. And you can paint every single one. Yep. You can see Justin's in there right now. He's actually got a pretty neat target to watch. He's got the vitals. So he, oh, cool. there's actually some more painting involved with that one. Yeah. As far as the light. So guys, I, I hope what you're hearing from this is each target is made individually all the way through, one at a time, sometimes two at a time, all the way through the process, all made in America. And obviously you guys can see the quality of this is top notch. And uh, I'm so pumped to be here in the Delta McKenzie factory in Iowa, just to be able to see the process of this. So next up, we're getting to see the painting of the target, so that's gonna be really cool.
it's a, a assembly line where targets just are pumping out like the Willy Wonka factory. But in reality, I mean, there's somebody's hands touching each and every single one of these Delta McKinnon targets. I think this is so cool. And just the craftsmanship that goes into even the painting of this thing is, uh, is amazing. So this is so cool. I'm so grateful to be able to see the process of this. I love showing it off. I really do. Man, this is cool. And so from here, it dries. Yep. And then it gets packaged. Yep. It goes in a box and then into our shipping. Wow. And so obviously, guys, as you guys can see, these are all now uh, and dried and ready to ship. So it's pretty cool. Well guys, we just took you through every single step and process it takes to make every single one of these individual targets. And you can see every single one of these was touched and made by hand. Correct. Yep, yep. From pouring to pulling, trimming, painting, boxing, all those are done by one person doing one target at a time. One target at a time. Every single one of these. I just, it's hard for me to believe. But that just goes to show you the detail that they put into the, to each and every single product and the target that you guys could be buying. So uh, that's pretty cool. Yep, awesome. Well, thanks again yeah. for the tour. No, I really, really appreciate out. it. I appreciate you coming. And, and um, I, like I said before, I love showing this off. It's, it's a passion for me. I love building this stuff. I love hunting. So it's awesome. I get to share that with everybody. Yeah, it's so cool for you guys because I know I didn't know it was like this. And like I said multiple times throughout this whole thing, I just thought it was a big assembly line where targets just got popped out. And I think all of you probably thought the same thing. So I know now, whenever I go out and shoot these targets, I'm gonna have a much higher appreciation for every single time I pull that arrow out. So like, man, a lot of people uh, made this happen. It wasn't just a big machine in China that, that pumped it out. So this is Right here cool. in the Midwest. Yeah, right here in my home state now of Iowa. It's pretty cool. Awesome. Yep. Thank you.